Hello and welcome to this pit stop for the great city of Rome, a game designed by Matthew Dunstan and Brett J. Gilbert coming from Z-Man and Abacus Spieler. In the great city of Rome, the players are competing to be the best architects by creating a 4x4 grid of these building cards over the course of the game. On each turn, we're going to flip over a new action strip and then in player order, which will rotate clockwise around the table, the players are going to choose where they wish to send their emissary on on this action strip in order to select what their actions will be over the next course of the round. Now, the player order doesn't depend now on where we're sitting, it's where we've gone on this action strip and the player closest to the Emperor gets to take their actions first. First thing they can do is draft one of the cards that are available. There are four decks and one card from each deck will be available for each turn. And you simply take that card and you put it into your hand. Then you get to do two things. You get to build and you get to activate your production buildings. Now all your production buildings can activate once per turn and they require two cogs. And the number of cogs you have is from where you are counting back to the Emperor. So the brown player here has only got one cog. They can, however, use money to supplement that, paying one coin to get an extra cog and that would activate all of their buildings. And in this case here, let's say we're using this city, we will earn one coin back here. And down here, we will get to put a brick on there because there isn't one. And why do we want a brick? Because the second action you can take is you can build one of the cards from your hand. Now that card we took earlier has got a brick cost, and here we go, it's two of the three bricks. The brown player has got none here, but they could use any bricks they've got in their own city. And again, you can spend money, and it costs two money for each brick. And in doing this, they can generate the two bricks they need, and they could place this into their tableau. Now, if you're further down on the strip, or the strip looks different because they all do, you might have generated some bricks from where you are. In this case, the white player will have one brick already, and they can choose then whether to spend money or to spend tiles they've generated, or just to build one of the buildings that only has a one brick cost. And the further down you go, the later you get to draft from the four cards available, or the player number dependent cards available, but the more powerful your action will be. Here, the purple player's got two cogs already. They don't have to add any money. All of theirs will activate. And they've got three bricks, which is the maximum you can need to build any of these buildings. Now, we're going to play this over 14 rounds, and you're going to have a maximum 4x4 four four grid of these buildings, and then we're going to score them. And all the different types are going to score in slightly different ways. Now, we've seen the production ones. They won't score your points by themselves, but they'll generate stuff for you. You also get these residential buildings. They come in values 2, 3, or 4, and you're going to want to put them into neighbourhoods of themselves because... At the end of the game, they're going to score points. You add up the value of all the houses in that particular neighborhood, and you're going to multiply that by the number of different colored public buildings you get available. Now, public buildings in themselves, when you put them down, they're going to give you a little bonus for everything that's around them. In this case, we're going to get three extra point tokens on here, and that will score extra points for every neighborhood next to it. This one down here got me these extra influence tokens, which we'll discuss in a second. And they have various effects, some that you draw cards and what have you. You also get temples, and each of the different temples has got its own scoring. In this case, if this temple in my city, if I have a minimum of four production buildings at the end of the game, I'm going to score 15 points. They'll score you points for all sorts of things, like just having temples, or if I have a certain amount of influence, or all the different things you do in the game, there are temples that will score them. The last type of building that's available are aqueducts. Now, aqueducts, you can only have one in each column or each row, and they're going to score for how many you have, and they're the only building that can overbuild onto a different type of building if you choose to do so. And you're going to score points, like I say, for having four of them, which would be quite difficult to do, you'll score a massive 40 points. Once everyone has taken their card, and they've done their produce and their build action, the start player marker will then just move clockwise around the table and we'll draw out more cards from here. And then everyone will go again, choosing on the action strip, and then they'll get to take their actions and we'll carry on. Now there are gonna be four rounds in the game in which an influence card is available. Some of these buildings have got influence stars on them, which are permanent for you. Also, as we said earlier, you can collect these influence tokens. And at the time, at the end of the round, when this has been revealed and these escalating points throughout the course of the game, whoever's got the most influence stars on display has to discard all their tokens, but then they get to claim the card. And that will also be part of the end game scoring alongside their residences, their aqueducts, their temples. You'll score a point for each coin you got at the end. You'll score a point for each two of these influence and these influence cards. And whoever scored the most points over the 14 rounds will be the winner of the great city of Rome. This has been a Game Pit Pit Stop. For more videos like this, check out our YouTube channel for more in-depth coverage of gaming, the Game Pit Podcast. Thank you.